Next question for this episode. What can you tell me about acetone? Does it affect the natural nail and does it harm it in any way? I was hoping you could help shed some light on this endless internet debate. <clears throat> there are a lot of related questions here, so I'll try to address them all. First, I'll start by saying that much of what's said by acetone about acetone is based largely on misunderstandings of this relatively safe substance, which, by the way, occurs naturally in our own bodies and low concentrations. Much of what's said about acetone is based on fear and misinformation. If acetone smelled like essential oils, few would be concerned about acetone. But its strange odor, odor and its odd feel on the skin make many wary. When this solvent is used properly, it's very safe. Water and acetone are very similar in many ways. They're soluble in each other, for starters, which shows they're similar. Why? Well, because in nature, the rule is like dissolves like. Major chemical, existent, uh, major chemical differences exist between oil and water, which is why they don't mix. Acetone and water also have similar effects on the nail plate, but there are differences as well. Both can absorb into the nail plate, but acetone evaporates many times faster than water. That's why it escapes much more quickly from the nail plate than water can. And that's why it doesn't accumulate in the nail plate. It's always evaporating away. Not water. It wants to stay where it is. But when acetone is absorbed into the nail plate, once inside, acetone mixes with the water in the nail to form a compatible mixture. In fact, these two are so highly compatible that when acetone evaporates from the nail plate, it carries with it some water from the upper surface or the upper surface layers of the nail plate. The same thing happens when rubbing alcohol and water are mixed. They form a compatible mixture, and when alcohol evaporates, it will also carry water away from the surface uh, to dry the surface. <clears throat> Since acetone removes water mostly from the surface, this makes the surface of the nail plate much drier, but only temporarily. <clears throat> rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, as its, um, as its chemical name is, or uh, something called ethyl ether, are examples of other solvents that may be used safely to temporarily remove water from the nail plate surface. Ethyl ether has been used for many years as a nail plate dehydrator. When used as directed, these nail surface dehydrators will not damage a nail plate. That's because a nail plate is only temporarily dehydrated, and the dehydration is easily reversed without damage to the surface. <clears throat> because water flows through the nail plate relatively quickly, these surface cells will only remain in this drier condition for somewhere in the range of 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the person. It could take several hours for the plate to completely rehydrate the normal levels. <clears throat> One major and important difference between water and acetone is how each affect the oil-soluble substances found within the nail plate. <clears throat> Oils and waxes come from the nail plate and surrounding tissue and make up typically about 5% of the nail plate or less. Acetone can dissolve and remove these substances from the surface of the nail plate. This adds to the dry appearance created by the loss of water from the surface. These oils can be replaced by using a high-quality, penetrating nail oil to replace any lost oils. <clears throat> but the lost water has a much greater effect on the nail plate. Acetone will remove more water than oil from the surface of the nail. <clears throat> when this occurs, we say the nail is dehydrated. But actually, only the nail plate surface is dehydrated. That's a very important difference. Dehydrating the entire nail is very different from removing surface oil and water, which is what acetone does and does really well. We can literally see the effects of this surface dehydration. Removing the water from the nail surface changes its surface appearance. Light won't transmit through the surface to illuminate the nail bed, for one thing. Nor will light reflect, reflect nicely off the surface to create what we call shine. <clears throat> Instead, the drier surface lacks this shine because light is scattered in every direction. This scattered light makes the nail plate appear white. Now, this is really important to understand. <clears throat> If a drop of water is placed on a dehydrated surface of the nail plate, the lost surface water is quickly replaced. 
The result is the white surface disappears and the surface layers are quickly rehydrated. Whereas rehydration is the opposite of dehydration. And it makes sense that this would happen. Water absorbs into the nail plate at very high rates. So as I said, the nail plate will not stay dehydrated for very long. Even breathing on the nail plate surface will start rehydrating that, that nail plate surface. If the white areas don't disappear, even after soaking the nails in water, how could that appearance be due to dehydration? Of course it cannot be, and therefore it is not correct to say the nail is dry in situations like this. Yet this is quite frequently said, and it creates a lot of confusion. Oftentimes, nail professionals incorrectly blame visible nail damage on having dry nails. This just shifts the responsibility from, of, of the problem into the wrong direction. Surface damage, such as pits and scratches on the nail plate, also scatter light in the same manner as does a, dry, a dehydrated surface. <clears throat> in other words, surface damage can look much like dehydration to the untrained eye, but it is not. Water is a perfect test for dehydration. If water is applied to a whitened area on the nail plate and it doesn't disappear, what does this say? <clears throat> It's common to mistake that surface roughness, pitting, or other damage on the nail surface is so-called dryness. <laughs> Try soaking a clip of a nail clipping in acetone for days, weeks, or months. The nail plate will not become pitted, nor will it develop, develop surface white spots. When you remove the clipping, <clears throat> the surface may look completely white, but a drop of water will reverse that. As discussed in other episodes, such as episode 7, this surface whiteness is caused by scraping the nail plate and forcing residual pieces of nail coating from the nail plate. Fortunately, this damage is completely avoidable, so please take time to watch episode 7 and learn how you can avoid these problems. If you want to learn more about the various types of white spots found both on the surface and inside the nail plate, you can see some really cool magnified pictures of white spots in either 2D or in magnificent 3D on my DV entitled Doug Shoon's Brain in 3D. It's a DV that teaches all about the structure of the natural nail using lots of really cool images of magnified nail plates and I walk you through them and explain what you're seeing. At the end of this episode, I'll give you a link uh, to, the, uh, to uh, this DVD in case you want to find out more.